So talking about Active Directory, really we've been talking about identity, right? This is identity as a service. Also, it could be authentication as a service. Basically, we have users. Those users have passwords. If we have MFA enabled, then they have to provide a code. And those three pieces of information basically prove to us that they are who they say they are. And that's the authentication aspect of it. But once they're authenticated, what can they do? What is their authority? What is their authorization? And so we haven't to this point talked about authorization. To do that, we're going to get out of Active Directory and we're going to go into, uh, in this case, a resource group. Now, when you go into any particular resource within Azure, you will see typically this access control setting. Not only is it there for the resource group level, but if we were to go down into a resource itself, which hopefully this won't take too long. So even within a virtual machine level, we do have this access control setting. Go back up to the resource group level. If we go into access control, this is where it allows us to control access to who uh, to whoever's going to be able to get into this resource group, who's going to be able to see the resources, who's going to be able to modify anything, add new resources, or even in the case of owners, create new users who can then access those things. So check access, right? So we can basically say, let's see as if, um, if John Doe, I've got a, a user named John Doe, let's see what John Doe's permissions are. John Doe has no permissions, right? There's not, he's not allowed, he's not denied. Um, basically, he would not be able to see any of these resources because nothing allows him to do it. But what if we wanted John Doe to be able to access those virtual machines or to access the Logic app in this case? This, what we want to do is we want to add a role assignment. Now, I'm going to go into this role assignments here. By default, you're going to have some role assignments. Some of them are going to be inherited from the subscription level. So uh, we can go into the subs actually go into the subscription level and look at the access controls in there. You can see them all here being inherited. I don't have any access that's been specifically granted to this resource group that is not just inherited from above. Okay. I'm my main account is in there. The cloud DIN is a cost um, a cost tracking application some of these are automatic so the service principle and things like that uh, automation accounts that create accounts for themselves okay so let's say we wanted to add a john doe to have access now first we have to decide what role we want to give john doe the three main roles that you need to understand are owner contributor and reader you can see that there are dozens of other roles, and we'll get into them in a second. But the top three, owner, contributor, and reader, are, are key. The reader role, as the name suggests, just gives you read-only access to those resources. That means that if you logged into the portal, you can see the resource group, you can go into the resource group, you can see the resources there, you can click into the resources and you can see them. But you can't make any changes. You can't stop them. You can't edit them. You can't delete them. Read only access is the reader, the reader role. Now the contributor role is like a full set of permissions. You can go into a, a resource group in this case, create resources, delete resources, edit resources. Um, you just can't give that permission to other users. So you you know you're you're a full-on manager of these resources but you can't make your friend a manager as well the owner permission is the most powerful and this uh, more than anything is the keys to the castle so do not hand out owner permission to your account or to specific resource groups unless you really know what you're doing but the owner permission basically allows you to manage everything just like a contributor and you can also grant access to other users. And so your friend can also get uh, contributor access and your other friend can also get owner access, etc. 
So that's reader, contributor, and owner. Now, as we scroll down these lists of other predefined roles, you can see very similar naming like backup reader, backup contributor, backup operator, um, CDN endpoint contributor, CDN endpoint reader, etc. There's a lot of contributor and reader roles against many of the services inside of Azure Event Grid, DocumentDB, Log Analytics, etc. So, we basically have the ability to give very uh, fine-grained permissions to individuals using role-based access control. I'm going to uh, give our friend uh, contributor access, John Doe, so I've chosen contributor, and I'm going to say I'm going to assign it to a user, and that user is John Doe, and it's selected John Doe. So once I save it, it's going to do a deployment that basically adds John Doe, and we can see John Doe, a user, has been given contributor access only to this resource group. So if we go back to check access, and we check John Doe's access, now we can see he's got contributor permissions specifically assigned to this group. Okay, And so pretty much that's a role-based access control. Now we could obviously go in here and if we wanted to ensure that somebody, no matter what permissions they have that could be inherited, let's say that um, I want my, my other account specifically to be denied access, okay? So my, my other, you know, my other account here is a denied access as a contributor. It's almost a, an opposite. It blocks users from performing specific actions even if they've got access through some other way. Okay. So, Scott Duffy was out of contributor. So that's basically role-based access control. It can happen at the resource level, at the resource group level. Um, we talked, we saw basically going into a subscription We've got access control options at the subscription level. So you can just for, you know, in this case, I don't mind showing you. Someone who works for me has contributor access to my entire account and they can create resources and I've given them permission to do so, right? And so um, we can see that basically this is one way of ensuring that people uh, can either have access or be denied access. So that's the um, authority essentially to do things as opposed to the authentication which is taken care of by Azure Active Directory.